Hi, I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto. Hi, I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto with documentary filmmaker Fred Wiseman. How does it feel to have National Gallery screening here at TIFF 2014? Well, I'm delighted. Uh, I, uh, it was a film I had great fun making. I spent 12 weeks uh, at the National Gallery in the winter of 2012, and I had access to everything that was going on. So I'm glad the film's being shown, and I hope people like it. And in the film, uh, it's discussed how paintings live on forever and they have such uh, a long eternal sort of life now do you think that film has the state the same amount of staying power or more well, so I, obviously I'd like that but that's not for me to say it would be pretentious for me to say that mm -hmm. but obviously you know you you uh, we all have fantasies that uh, what we do is good and that people will want to see it absolutely and it's all you also talked about how uh, in painting you have to choose the specific moment in the story or the, the the wonderful people who worked at the gallery were discussing how it's you it's very um, you know it's very specific and it's very curated in terms of the moment that the artist chose so when you're making a film did you you do the same thing in terms of sort of editing down the footage after gathering a hundred hours of footage or so. Did you relate to the artists in some way? Did you feel closer to the artists that you were looking, whose work you were looking at? Well, I, I, uh, I had 170 hours of rushes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, the process is the same in all the art forms, whether it's painting, uh, sculpture, writing poetry, novels, or plays. Uh, in the sense that uh, it, it, you, you, you have the same issues. You have issues of characterization, abstraction, uh, uh, duration, uh, uh, metaphor, uh, uh, storytelling. Uh, and so uh, the, the way those issues are resolved is different with each artist and, 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 and uh, the, the, the way they're dealt with is different in each form. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I think what I try to do has something in common with writing. Uh, uh, for example, I mean, I, uh, I, ha I reduced 170 hours to a three-hour movie. So uh, everything, isn't, everything is a choice. I, uh, I have to make choices of which individual sequences I'm going to use, and then I have to reduce those sequences to a usable form and then I have to order those sequences uh, in a dramatic, uh, into a dramatic narrative. Um, all that involves thousands, if not millions, of choices. Mm -hmm. And in order to make those choices, I have to feel that I have some understanding of what's going on in, in the uh, sequences. And what did the uh, workers at the National Gallery think of the film? Well, I wasn't there when the film was screened for them, but the reports I got were that they liked it a lot. And the film is going to be screened at the National Gallery uh, before it opens in London in January. And as someone who's been a filmmaker for so many years and so prolific, uh, what advice would you give to an aspiring filmmaker? Marry somebody rich. <laughs> Do you think that your background in law helped you a lot in terms of uh, going into filmmaking? Uh, not really, because when I went to law school, I never went to class. I read novels all the time. Uh, but it, it's helped me in the sense that people, when I'm negotiating a contract, uh, uh, it sometimes intimidates people when they find out that I've been to law school, even though I know more, don't know any more about the issues than they do. <laughs> And what was it like for you this year at the Venice Film Festival getting the Golden Lion Lifetime Achievement Award? Well, yeah, I had no objection to it. Uh, I, I, I obviously liked it a lot. Uh, it was a nice recognition of the work that I've been doing and the films that I've been made. And to have that from Venice meant a great deal to me. And what do you think it is about institutions in particular, whether you know it's a school or in this case a museum that you've focused on so many? Why do you think that interests you so much? Well, institutions provide a framework. They provide a limit. Uh, they, they serve the same function that the lines and the net do in a tennis court. Everything that takes place within the institution is fit for inclusion in the film. And everything that takes place outside the institution is another film. 
or another or other films uh, and I'm also interested to see how people work within the context of having to follow certain rules because uh, the people who run the institution have say at a welfare center they have certain rules and regulations that uh, 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 determine who they give money to and then the people who come in the clients who come into the welfare center have to um, qualify uh, within the framework of those rules so um, but really the institution is only an excuse to have a look at a wide variety of human behavior and was there anything in the National Gallery that you saw a lot of parallels to another institution that you have explored in the past or, or did you think to yourself like oh this is so much like this institution or that one well I mean it, it, not directly so much but what interested me at the National Gallery most was of course the paintings mm -hmm. and the way the paintings were uh, maintained and uh, dis publicly discussed uh, and there's no major human experience that hasn't been painted uh, and what I uh, tried to do I mean the, the National Gallery collection has 2400 paintings and I think there's something like 250 in the film and um, in those 250 paintings you see the way uh, painters uh, treated some of the major aspects of human behavior uh, and you have an opportunity to contrast them with the way those same kinds of human experiences are presented in other forms whether it's in movies or in plays or poems or novels and how did you go about selecting the paintings that were featured in the film? Well, a uh, combination of what interested me, uh, what the tour guides, the, the interesting comments about the paintings that the guides in the museum made, uh, and I tried, I don't believe there's anything such as representative, but I, I tried to present some of the major works that were in the possession of the gallery. And tell me a little bit about your upcoming screenings in New York and London and LA as well, I believe. Well, uh, National Gallery is opening in New York uh, on uh, 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 November 5th. It's opening in Paris on October 8th. Mm -hmm. And National Gallery is opening in London in January. And at Berkeley, the film I did before National Gallery is opening um, in London on September 12th. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on another great film, and uh, best of luck here at TIFF. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto.